just for fun, let's play a game called Things This Boy Mama Said Today. First up, you don't have to tell everyone when you pass gas. Second of all, I know that you're really good at peeing outside, but you need to be sure you don't do it in the front yard. <laughs> Among other things I have said today <laughs> are, yes, you must have on pants when you go knock on the neighbor's door. Friends, if you didn't already know, I'm Sarah Ruth, a mom of three little boys, and they are a joy. It is such a blessing to be what some would term a boy mom. But there are some things about being a boy mom you just don't know at first. <laughs> and you kind of come into. And so I want to spend a few minutes today sharing with you from my heart five things that I have learned as a boy mom that I think every boy mom should know. Stay tuned. <laughs> togetherness.com and here on our channel we share all things faith-filled homemaking, faith-filled adventures, and faith-filled homeschooling. Today we're going to be fo focusing on our faith-filled homemaking which I consider my motherhood and the way that I parent part of my homemaking. How about you? Do you think that that's homemaking? I know most people think of it in terms of like keeping the house but I feel like the things that are an extension of my motherhood, how I parent, how I communicate with my children, um, you know, how I make them feel, all of those things are part of homemaking. Our, the atmosphere in our home um, has a lot to do with how we engage with our kids. So anyway, if you have not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you do that now. And as you're listening to me share, if you have some things to add or a question or another resource that you found really helpful, please go ahead in the comments and let us know. Uh, others might need the resource you suggest. I certainly uh, am not the end all be all of mothers. <laughs> so I'm sure that you may suggest something that I want to take a look at or read or whatever. But let's talk about five things that I think every boy mom um, should know and should be doing. So first up, and maybe this is super obvious, but let them use their energy. I don't know what the deal is with little boys, but I've been around a plethora of children. I was a public school educator. I worked at children's homes. Most of my adult life, I have worked in some capacity with kids. And I can just tell you, there is a difference between boys and girls. Now, of course, there are outliers. I've been around little girls who certainly have their fair share of energy, but boys and girls are wired differently. And I've been around little boys who are quieter or enjoy a good book and can sit longer. But in general, little boys are just little bundles of energy. <laughs> they need to move, they need to click, they need to swish, they need to, I mean, I you would laugh if you sat with us at a dinner table in our family we have family meals. It's a really important part of our family. Actually, I have a challenge for that. So I will put that in the um, description box below. So in case you don't know about our uh, challenge regarding family meals, it's called Gift 365. You can maybe jump in on that. It's totally free. I give you some resources and a tracker. And it's a great way to build family connection at mealtimes. Anyway, Family meals are a thing here. And literally, like, we have a lazy Susan in the table, and my boys take turns, like, spinning it the entire meal. And uh, nobody has their chair on all fours. Like, there, I don't know that there's ever been a time in my 10 years as a boy mom where my kids have all four <laughs> legs of their chair on the floor doesn't mean that I have not talked to them about it. doesn't mean some of them have not had to stand up during a meal in order to try to help them do it. But their little bodies just desire to move. So it's really important as boy moms that we understand this is a God thing. God created our boys uniquely so that they would be ready to take home the world. And so what does that mean for us as moms is that we need to understand what is 
appropriate to expect of them. Of course, our little boys do need to learn how to sit through a church service. They do need to learn that there's a time and place for everything. But in our general day-to-day lives, we can give them the gift of letting them move, of letting them not requiring, you know, I'm a Charlotte Mason mom. We do long, lengthy readings. My kids are used to hearing me read to them for 15 to 30 minutes at a time and then we go to another book but i do not require them to have still hands and still bodies while we do that and i give them breaks and i let them run and i encourage them to because i know that god's design in them has created them for motion so that's number one they are filled with energy and as boy moms we need to allow them to use that energy um the second thing is is many boy moms don't respect their sons. And friends, this is hard. Um, I love one of Miss Mason's principles that said children are born persons. Friends, our little boys and our growing sons, I now have a 10 year old, you know, he certainly is still, he's not a man. I'm his mother. I deserve his respect, but I'm, I have to be mindful of how I speak to him. I cannot belittle him even when he's disrespectful, even when he's making wrong choices. I have to rein in my tongue and consider him as a whole person and speak to him in a respectful way. Acknowledge the things he's doing well and right. Give him that accolade and that recognition. Call him up higher with my words. So for example, if I notice he's doing something in a store that is really a poor choice like maybe he is like opening a container and smelling things and some of it sloshed out or you know he needs to move and he's pumping something in the store or doing something crazy instead of being like son don't do that you know better I can choose to call him up higher and say something to the effect of hey buddy um I know you know all about how the workers in this store prepare the store for us to come in and Uh, our family, you know, is a family of integrity. What do you think we should be doing right now with our hands as we walk through the store? You know, are there things we can be doing to respect the workers and the work that they've done? And that's a big reframe from my natural inclination to like chastise him and kind of call him out as foolish, which is what I perceive the behavior to be being. But if I let him know I think he's foolish, then I'm no longer respecting him. And when he senses that, I lose what could have been a teachable moment or a moment where he would respect me back. This is kind of like man code. And I think women, we don't always (laughs) understand it. Um, But when we're made aware of it, we can really learn to respect our sons and to help them and to call them up and call them higher. Um, So that is number two. Number three, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the respect discussion, but um, it's a different vein of it. It's talking too much. And I am guilty of this. I am so guilty of this, friends. So I have a mentor who is in her 60s and she's been married for years and years and has raised three children and homeschooled and was a pastor's wife. I mean, she just has so much wisdom and I have such respect for her. And one of the things that she has counseled me um, regarding my marriage and regarding my boys is, you know, Use the least amount of words possible to get your point across and also know that you will often have to share things three times. And this is not meant to be disrespectful to men. It's just their communication is so different from women. We enjoy storytelling. We enjoy communicating regarding emotions and all these additional embellishments in our speech and in our communication. And the point of communication for us is primarily connection. Um, But whereas with boys and men, it is, you know, it needs to be more straightforward. They're not constantly needing that emotional support. They're more just looking for, what am I to do next? What is expected of me? I wanna accomplish that goal and move to the next thing. And like I said, I'm I'm generalizing friends. They're gonna, you and the Holy Spirit are raising your kids. If you have a little boy that is wired differently, you're welcome to throw out anything that I share. Um, but in general, I have found this to be true for my three little boys who are all wired very differently. So these are things that I see function similarly for each of their very different personalities. So less words, less, you know, say things in 
say what you want your child to know in 15 seconds or less. Literally, I could, I could barely do that. <laughs> my videos are so long. I've been getting onto myself for having such long videos here on YouTube, but I'm trying to abbreviate them. So let me move on to number four. <laughs> number four, um, not setting. A lot of boy moms don't set firm enough boundaries with sons. Um, our boys will take, take charge and run over us if we permit it. They are, you know, God has designed them to be pioneers, to be leaders. But at these younger ages, it is part of their role to respect authority and to learn how to do that. And you are part of that system for them. And so it's really important that you learn to set firm boundaries. And for many of us, this is hard work because we don't want to have to give consequences. We don't want to have to say, no, you can't do that fun thing. We love our kids. You know, we don't want to take away privileges, but being clear with our boundaries. And then when our children cross those boundaries, we there's some form of negative consequence for them. This helps them understand where the lines are, you know, and, and, and it helps them to not run over mom. and. It really will relieve stress for you as a mother and help you have a great relationship with your son or your sons. Uh, in early in my motherhood, I was hanging out with a friend who had, I think it's a, she has nine children now, but at the time she had, I think six, five or six. And um, she was pregnant. Maybe she was pregnant with number six and she had little ones running everywhere. And her toddler, um, she told her toddler to not do something and the toddler went on to do it and we were in the middle of a conversation well this pr seven months pregnant mama jumped over her couch and went and got that little toddler and set the toddler down on the blanket and said mama said no it's your job to listen and obey please sit down and take a minute to think about it and you know I was so it really impressed upon me that my when I set a boundary I have to follow through on it and it's so important with my sons that I do this this shows them respect and it helps them learn what healthy relationships should look like one day they're gonna have an employer one day they're gonna you know need to obey God you know and have a relationship with him you want them to understand authority so they can be successful men successful leaders and then finally number five is um not expecting too little of our sons there are times when you know our sons are ready to rise up to the next level of responsibility and be given more and if we keep them low and we don't offer them these opportunities to kind of go to the next level in their you know not manliness, but like in their responsibility level, we're actually like crushing them and kind of, you know, not releasing them to rise up and to be the leader and the man of God that God is calling them to be. And so as their mother, you know, oftentimes we have a little bit of a fear factor in us, like, oh no, a pocket knife? Oh, you know, he'll cut his finger off or, you know, the, the famous, the Christmas storyline, he'll shoot his eye out, you know, but we have to understand like, Yes, of course, God gave us that inside of us to protect and care for our children. But at the same time, these are little men and they're not going to be boys forever. And if the first time they handle a knife is when they're 17, they're not going to have any knife skills. <laughs> if the first time they handle a gun is when they're, you know, 18 years old, um, we can limit them too much. And so it's really important that we allow them to move up in responsibility. Maybe our sons need household responsibility, like taking out the trash or riding their bike somewhere on their own, um, you know, nearby and, and getting a time limit or being allowed to go to a friend's house for a couple hours without parents. That's a hard transition when our, you know, littles become eight and nine and 10 and 11 and they need some of that freedom and um, responsibility to be given to them. And so one of the things that I've learned with my sons is I talk to them about, you know, sometimes they won't want to do a chore or they don't want a certain responsibility. And I'm like, yes, but you want to drive a car or, you know, but you want to be able to do this or to do this. You know, the more responsibility you show me you can handle with a good attitude and do well, 
then the more privileges that you will have because you can handle the responsibility that these things are tied together. And so those are my five top tips for boy mamas, things that I've learned, things that I try to be aware of. And I also want to give you a little bonus. There are two books that I have found so helpful in the way that I parent my sons. And like I said, by no means can I say I've risen amazing. I have raised, excuse me, I have raised amazing godly sons into manhood. I haven't done that yet. Um, so let the Holy Spirit be your guide. But these are just as I'm walking out my parenting of sons, these are the things that the Holy Spirit has given me or spoken to my heart about. And I just want to pass these things on to you as a sister in the Lord. Um, the first book is Mother and Son, The Respect Factor. And it is written by Dr. Emerson, I think, Egrix. I don't know how to say his last name. But this is the second in like a series kind of because... The first one is Love and Respect, and it's about marriage and teaching you how to talk and communicate with a husband and respect him. But this mother and son book was superb and really helped me understand some of the needs that my sons have and how to relate to them and how to communicate with them in a way that would not squelch who they were as, you know, boys becoming men. <laughs> and then the other book is, and it wasn't necessarily written to mothers of boys, but because she had so many sons, so many of the stories I related to, so much of the wisdom was relevant. It is Mere Motherhood by Cindy Rollins. Um, she has so many little anecdotes in there and just things that I would just snicker and relate to immediately. She talks about, she's like, only a boy mom can understand how... A muddy footprint can be on the ceiling, but not on any wall leading up to the ceiling. <laughs> and I just like, I'm like, absolutely. Yes, I can understand that. Um, so anyway, I hope that this was helpful and encouraging to you. If you're not a boy mom, I hope there is something in here. Or maybe you just all the girl moms didn't even watch this because it wasn't for them. I don't know. But if you would go ahead and like this video, be such a blessing to me. And if you have a suggestion for a video you'd like for me to make or a topic you hope I will cover soon, go ahead and stick that in the comments too. All right. Uh, do life together. Enjoy your time with your family. That is a gift from the Lord. Until next time.